Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, and today we're going to be talking about painting your miniatures quickly and easily. There's nothing worse than having a fully assembled army on the table, which is just a horde of grey plastic. But unfortunately, painting miniatures to a good standard can often be time-consuming, and not everyone has that time to invest in their miniatures. But there are a number of different shortcuts that you can take for making sure that your miniatures are still painted, but also still look pretty good on the tabletop as well. Now in this video, we're gonna be focusing mainly on Space Marines, but I will maybe explore different units and different miniatures in future videos. So let's get started. The first step in painting miniatures is of course to assemble them, and my first tip is to create what is known as a sub-assembly. This is where you only glue some parts of the model, leaving some components or groups of components separate. In this case, I have kept our Space Marines forearms and bolter separate from the body. The reason for doing this is to make the painting process much easier. By not having to angle our brush around the bolter in order to reach the torso, we not only save ourselves a headache, but also a lot of time. I find the best way to hold your separate components is to drill out a small hole and affix a small section of wire using superglue. I have covered this in more detail in a previous tutorial, which you can find a link to below. Before we begin painting our miniatures, we first of all need to decide on our colour scheme and plan the paints we'll be using accordingly. Now most people will choose to paint their marines in one of the iconic chapters such as the Dark Angels, Ultramarines or Space Wolves, and the paints you can use for these will be included at the end of this video. In this video I'll be painting my marines in a colour scheme of my own devising, but the basic areas of the colour will be similar across all chapters, and I'll be limiting my selection to only 4 paints and a primer, which leads me to our next step. Priming. Once you have your miniature assembled and paint scheme picked out, we now want to prime it to ensure that the paint adheres to the surface of the model properly. We can save ourselves a lot of time here by using a colour primer such as Citadel's Death Guard Green. Now I know that I'm a heretic for using this on a Loyalist Marine. By priming with our base colour we can shave off quite a lot of painting time that it would have otherwise taken to apply the base coat by hand. It also means that we can easily batch prime a group of marines together in one go, but I'll touch more on batch painting later on. In our first painting step we'll be picking out some of the armour details and for this I'll be using Nurgling Green and a dry brushing technique. Dry brushing involves loading up a brush with some paint and removing some of the excess from it on a spare piece of tissue or a piece of paper until only a small amount of paint remains in the bristles. Using our prepared dry brush, we can now start to pick out the edges of the armour panels. By very lightly dragging the brush along these hard edges, we will gradually build up a fine line of light coloured paint. By making the edges lighter, they will stand out more, which will not only help to improve the level of detail in the miniature, but also gives us a slightly more realistic appearance as light would reflect off of these edges. The next step is to paint the areas of the miniature that are not an armor panel or bare metal, and for this, I'll be using a bad and black. As with all the base coats and I'll be painting in this video, you'll want to mix this paint with some water in roughly equal quantities to make the paint easier to work with. With our paint thinned out, we now want to carefully paint all of those black areas of the miniature. Some of these areas may vary between chapters, but for the most part, the gaps between the armor panels, the stock of the bolter, pipes and any pouches that the model may have can all be painted black. Don't worry about getting perfect coverage with your first layer, as this is why we watered down our paint. After applying your first layer, allow the paint to dry before applying a second layer over the top. This layering technique will give a much more uniform looking finish without potentially obscuring details by applying the paint too thickly. Our next step is to paint all of the metallic areas of the miniature and for this I'll be using lead belcher. These areas include parts of the bolter, pouch buttons, exhaust vents and some helmet details. Much like how we applied our bad and black, you'll want to thin this paint down a little bit as well with some water and apply a couple of thin coats. When painting with metallics, take particular care not to overspill onto the other areas as they can be quite difficult to cover up. For some chapters, you may find that you also need to paint some gold details in addition to the silver areas. The exact areas that you'll need to paint I'll cover in more detail later on, but you can approach these in much the same way as you go about painting on the lead belcher. Washes are an excellent way to add shading to the panel lines in the armour and other recesses which really helps to make the details pop. For this job I'll be using non oil and once again I'll be mixing in just a small amount of water to reduce the strength of the wash. I find that two parts wash to one part water is a good amount. So next we want to paint our wash across the entire miniature. 
By watering down the wash, you can control how strong you want the shading to be. And you also get a much smoother finish than if you had applied just one heavy layer. Just make sure that you allow the previous layer to dry thoroughly before applying any subsequent layers. At this stage, the miniature is perfectly serviceable for on your tabletop, but there are a couple of small extra details that you can add. These include things such as purity seals and the lenses in the helmet. Now for the parchment of the seal, I'll be painting it using Rakar Flesh. Whereas the lens and the wax seal can be painted using Mephiston Red. And finally, we can finish off painting both of these areas using a wash of Agrax Earthshade. Basing is an excellent way to finish off your miniatures and luckily there are a few shortcuts that you can make to speed up this process as well. By using textured paints such as Games Workshop Sterling Mud that I'm using here or Vallejo's Texture Gels, we can quickly apply some ground texture and base colour at the same time. You want to apply the textured paint quite thickly to give the ground an uneven appearance, but be careful not to overspill onto the miniature too much. A little overspill won't matter though, as this will simply look as though dirt and mud has been picked up around the Space Marine's feet. After allowing your texture to fully dry, we now want to apply a dry brush over the top using a lighter colour, and for this I'm using Gawthor Brown. By following the same steps we used for our earlier dry brush, you'll be able to pick out the raised sections of the ground, which will help to improve the realism of the earth. With our dry brush completed, we now want to apply a wash over the base using a dark colour such as Agrax Earthshade, which I'm using here, or alternatively Null Oil. This wash will give us some darker shading in the recesses and make the base look much more detailed. The final step is to neaten up the lip of the base by painting it with a single colour. I personally use a bad and black, but many people use various other browns. This will help to finish off the miniature by covering up any overspills that may have happened during painting. And here we have our finished Space Marine. You can find a full list of all the paints that I've used in this video in the description below. And now, as promised, let's cover which alternative paints you can use for the other main Space Marine chapters. For the Blood Angels, prime using Mephiston Red, dry brush using Fire Dragon Bright, paint the details and the weapon stock using a bad and black, before painting the metallic areas using Lead Belcher. Finish off with a wash of Nolan Oil over the whole miniature. For the Ultramarines, prime using McCrag Blue, dry brush the edges with Fimrizian Grey and paint the bolter stock, pouches and areas between the armour using a bad and black. We are adding in an extra step here by painting the chest details and shoulder pad trim using Retributor Armour. However, you can use Lead Belcher for the rest of the silver areas. Finish off with a wash of Nuln Oil. For the Dark Angels, prime with Caliban Green and dry brush the edges using Warpstone Glow before tackling the various details with Abaddon Black. Apply a base coat of Lead Belcher over the metal areas before finishing off with a Nuln Oil wash. To paint the Imperial Fists, start off by priming with Avalon Sunset and dry brush the edges using Dawn Yellow. Tackle the details as usual with a bad and black and lead belcher before finishing off using a non oil wash over the silver and black areas, but use a Seraphim Sepia wash over the yellow armor instead. And so that covers some of the main chapters that you can paint by using a spray primer. Now I just want to say a big thank you to Alchemist Workshops who have sponsored this video by providing the miniature used in this video. I'll include a link to their store in the description below and also on screen now, where you can find up to 20% off the RRP for Games Workshop products. And so that concludes this video on painting your miniatures quickly and easily. If you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below and also leave me your suggestions for future videos in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my future videos. And if you want to support this channel, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page, which you can also find a link to below. So the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.